Hello everyone. Today, let us discuss about the topic of icons. Uh, icons are used in our churches. And let us look at uh, what the Bible actually says about icons. Mm, I title this as the whole truth about the biblical teaching about images used in worship, I mean. Okay, let's begin with the basics. Um, when it comes to images, it is expressly forbidden to make any graven images as the Ten Commandments tell us in Exodus 20 or 5. Thou shalt not make unto yourself any image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in or is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, serve them. For I am I the Lord, my God, jealous God. Okay. So we can see here how God goes into such detail when it comes to the making of images. That we are not supposed to make any image to represent him and um you know uh, and he goes through all this list of things that would encompass everything in the sense that all the creator created order whether it is heaven earth or beneath the earth so all of these things are uh, uh, you know just what do they make up of like uh, everything in creation basically everything that is created um, should not be made into an image for the purpose of worship and uh, how is worship defined in this uh, commandment thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them okay we are not supposed to create ourselves okay? um as i told uh, as i uh, as i talked about in the last uh, previous video um when we spoke about worship um here it is translated as thou shalt not bow down. So this bowing down is talking about shakha or prostrating oneself, uh, falling, falling upon your face. That action we are not supposed to do, nor serve them. Okay. So these two things, the serve part, okay, when we looked at how uh, it is related to liturgical service. For example, uh, if you have a, when we think of a, serving God or uh, when we think of serving God we think of uh, living a moral life living according to certain precepts and all but uh, when we but we have to understand in the context of paganism when it is has to do with uh, any Roman gods or uh, any other Egyptian gods or anything like that it's not what they're talking about when God says do not serve them he's a uh, basically saying uh talking about liturgical worship where they offer up sacrifices incense um uh, set up altars to them and serve them in that so he's talking about uh both these things okay? to bow down or to serve and these two are expressly forbidden so getting like uh, giving it a close read is very important for us to understand what is going on in this um uh, command okay so let us look at the hebrew word okay as i written down in in, uh, in a um, latinized form pestle pestle uh, and i've given you the strong's number also uh, the word that is uh, translated into uh, the english is uh, pestle okay um, which is translated into uh, english as graven image so a uh, pestel is an idol, okay? um, is an image or a graven image which is expressly uh, a carved image that is uh, prohibited here. And uh, and the basic sort of uh, uh, Greek word used in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and the New Testament in the Greek Bible, when we look at the Greek Bible, the word that is used for idols in general, okay, is Idolon. Okay, so it's important for us to actually remember these uh, two words before we go any further, so things become much more clearer for us. 
Okay, let's move on. Just just remember uh, remember these two things. Okay, first one is a vessel. Okay, which is used here and in many times uh, we're always referring to idols. Okay, and uh, idolon, which uh, from which uh, comes the word idol. Okay, so let us look at the etymological roots of uh, the word idolatry in English. Okay, um, it's very impor uh, important because. Uh, both the root words you know come from uh, the greek language okay from these two words idolon or latreya latreya is worship worship in the sense that uh, again the kind of liturgical worship offered in the sense that uh, you offer service to god okay so we will look at this word again later on but uh, uh, idolatry comes from idolatria. See here, idolatria. Okay, which uh, which gets into the English as idolatry. Okay, uh, idolon it means the image. Okay, the idol or, a, or a image, and uh, latria means worship. So image worship is called idolatry, and uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, forbidden in many times but when we uh, think of idolatry we need to ask the question why is it bad okay of course god has commanded us that uh, we are not supposed to worship idols we are not supposed to do image worship but why is it bad because it uh, goes against the truth of god hence that god is invisible created not matter it's not like you can point to something in this universe in this created order the things that uh, we see around we can't point to that and say that that is god okay god is spirit as jesus said to that samaritan okay and uh, he's invisible and many times we see this repeated in the bible that he's invisible so and he's created in the sense that he doesn't fall under the created realm okay and uh, let us look at this word um, uh, this verse from the romans 1 25 um, and he's talking about idolaters who change the truth of god into a lie in the sense that it goes against the truth of god that he is invisible not uh, he doesn't belong to the created order worshipped okay Served, Leo, uh, the word here uses Latreo, the uh, word just, that we just looked at, okay, uh, served in the sense that liturgical service, uh, the creature more than the creator. So they worshipped and served, okay, they fell down upon God before the idols than the, uh, the creator who is invisible. So, who is blessed forever, Amen. Okay, so. So, latreo, let us look at this word, is to minister, that is to render religious homage, to serve, to do service and worship. Okay. Sometimes in the New Testament, this word latreo is used, uh, you know, in a very non worship context, in the sense that you offer like public service or something like that. Okay. But uh, majority of the time, like uh, this word is only used for worship. Okay, whether it is uh, for false worship or also worship of our gods and our images and the worship of the true god so uh, latreo yeah. so we are supposed to latreo in the serve god okay um alone and not other things or serve god with an image of himself not to make up something from our imagination and create an image and okay? that here from the uh, biblical okay uh, and uh, as jesus affirms and many the uh, uh, whole of the bible affirms no man had seen god at any time as jesus tells everyone um, at this time the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father he hath declared him okay so no man had seen god okay let us um, let us come back to the uh, you know rest of the verse later but the thing is no man has seen god uh, 
we did not see anything so uh, why why create like a, some kind of imagination imaginative things uh, you know out of it um, so now let us look at this uh, i hope this is like not confusing to others but uh, this is bi the biblical view of reality god exists in the uncreated realm okay here we see where yeah, this is like the dividing line that uh, separates the uncreated and all creation okay created and the uncreated and divided by this red band here okay so who is uncreated father son and holy spirit they are uncreated okay when it comes to creation there is invisible and the visible creation heavenly angels that we do not see okay the creatures that we do not see and the earthly humans animals and everything too so we see um, there is this strong separation between created creation and uh, created and the uncreated okay and uh, this actually helps us um, understand more of why actually god is and making an image of god actually uh, dragging god into this creation part okay and uh, disrespecting him in a certain way okay so in a way uh, even in our thoughts when we think of god like some kind of old man or something like that that is what we do right so um, uh, we are supposed to leave divine revelation as it is okay and uh, follow this uh, biblical view of reality that god is uncreated he is uh, is formless okay there is no form that he has made yes um, um whether it's heavenly or earthly and all creation everything is completely uh, separated um, you know there is a real strong distinction between the uncreated and the created. okay so would this lead okay this biblical world view that we uh, we just looked at would this lead to something like this because uh, many of these churches Okay. have a setup like this where people congregate it's uh, more about the congregation you know a person comes and preaches here there is no uh, uh, no image or anything like that in front of uh, the people and uh, just strictly practice this okay um, and uh, they think that it is uh, faithful to the biblical text and uh, how um is this the right way to practice it as in uh, you have no images in churches at all uh, is that so uh, we need to ask that question and even in mosques you see like the same kind of a uh, practice in the sense that uh, there is no artwork no images of uh, anything else okay and uh, do, uh, and uh, in some churches uh, you don't even have a cross okay even that is seen as some kind of idolatry and this is the right way to do it then so, um i think uh, um the, uh, so far what i have to spoken about and all it's only the half the picture if you really actually read the whole bible and read it in the context that it is revealed we get something else and uh, we need to look at the context uh, of the commandment when it was revealed when moses write, uh, wrote it down and gave it to the israelites how did they practice it in the sense that uh, the people whom to whom it was sent how was it practiced because when we whenever we think of a divine revelation or whatever was revealed uh, through a prophet or a uh, period of time there is an immediate uh, fulfillment of that commandment or word that god speaks as in at least uh, some people okay for example moses who wrote it down and gave it to uh, the people and the faithful israelites send out how did they practice it what we are supposed to look at what is the context the context back then was it can be revealed in the this verse Deuteronomy 4:15 they he therefore good heed unto yourselves so god is saying them be careful for ye saw no manner of similitude as in you saw no image you saw no form of god okay there is nothing that uh, uh, 
was seen okay on the day that the lord spoke unto you in her about of the midst of the fire he spoke up the midst of fire and his people heard the voice of god but they did not see anything that is a context and making an image out of their imagination mm -hmm. is wrong right so let's decorate yourself and make you a graven image similitude of any figure the likeness of male or female so uh, over and over we see this kind of uh, these kinds of uh, um, warnings uh, saying that uh, do not make any image because why the reason is given here clearly you do not see any manner of similitude as in you did not see any form back then you heard the word of god yes all of you uh, as jesus also said them uh, said to the uh, the people who uh, were listening to him that your fathers heard the uh, um, heard the word of god okay but uh, they did not see anything okay so they are not supposed to uh, make any images but what do you see uh, in actual practice when we look at the tabernacle and later in the glorified sort of temple where they have a lot of money to make uh, many things tabernacle was like a, a makeshift uh, sort of tent um, good for moving and all but when we get to the temple it gets uh, even more better and glorious so what is the practice that uh, moses david or the people what what did they do Yeah, it's clear from the Bible that they made a lot of images of uh, things in heaven, okay, things on earth. And you shall make two cherubim of gold of beaten work. It's talking about the ark, and uh, and it is where God actually meets people. He is associating His presence with images, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee. From top of the sea, from between the two cherubims, so they were commanded by God to make these cherubims, uh, as in these cherubs, uh, uh, as shown to Moses uh, how to make it, because the, uh, that is what here uh, the scripture says that he we saw it. So what he saw, he made an image of it. It's not like he did not make any image of uh, anything. It was not like the modern chairs that we saw. But it was full of images. So let us look at the temple also now. So shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of cunning work. The cherubims shall it be made. So again, you see on even on the curtains, um, uh, there are cherubims painted. So maybe the holy of holies, like uh, uh, yes, but even on the curtains there are uh, images made. And within the oracle, he made two cherubims of olive tree, each ten cubits high, and he carved all the walls of the house round about. So all the walls of the house round about, talking about the temple here in Second Kings, how uh, Solomon's temple, how did he, how he made it, and uh, he carved the uh, carved it full with carved figures of cherubim and palm trees and open flowers within and without. So there are. There winds everywhere. Um, there, uh, this uh, whole temple is filled with uh, images. So they had no problem uh, making images of uh, angels and associating it with the presence of God itself. So what is going on here? We need to understand uh, the context in which the, this scripture was uh, uh, revealed. And this is the context actually. There are icons, or images. Icon just means image, actually. In it's a Greek word which means just image. That's it. In the Bible, that is how it is used. And these uh, these images, numerous images, it's filled of images. Both the tabernacle as we seen, okay, on the curtain um, and uh, you know, curtain that separates the most holy place from the holy place, where all these people conduct their worship. As in burning incense, prostrating before the God, and uh, uh, lighting candle, uh, the candlesticks, and all, uh, placing bread uh, on the table, they worship God with the use of images. That's a very important point that we need to remember. 
and these were icons and for all of these things the word pestle which we have seen um, though these things were made you know, you know three dimensional also in the sense that uh, on the earth the two cherubim that we see they were uh, um, uh, there is no way to actually make it without carving it but the thing is the word pestle is never used for all these things okay so we can consider this as images made uh, in the further use of worship in the house of God, okay, that he commanded how to make them and all. Both, both Moses and Solomon, both of them do it. Okay, so and uh, the uh, and we need to understand in these things. I am not saying that uh, these things were represented God in any way, in the sense that uh, images were were made and used in worship also, but. There is a difference between worship and creation that we need to make. Okay? The words in the Bible, okay, whether it's Greek or uh, um, whether it's uh, uh, the word um, used in the Bible, whether uh, it's uh, the Hebrew word shaha, which means to bow down, to worship, okay? whether it's that word or Proskineo in Greek, okay, the same, uh, which means uh, a similar thing to bow down and worship and all. Same word is used, bowing down for men. Uh, so, there, uh, what I'm proposing here is a, um, a difference, okay, there, there should be a difference and a distinction being drawn between uh, the concept of worship okay on the concept of veneration okay so because even in english the word worship doesn't mean what it means right now we think of worship we think of only worshiping god but uh, in olden days we used to uh, use this worship uh, not not even olden days just like 50 60 years ago or something like that uh, or a king, like for the king of england or someone would be called your worship as in uh, you know uh, I worship your majesty or something like that. We, that was okay with, to say because what they meant, well, what they really meant was veneration, respect, honor. That is what we meant. But here we should distinguish the uh, um, between worship and veneration. Okay? So let us look at the word shekha as in to bow down okay, and worship. How is it used in different ways in the Bible? In the sense that uh, um, I've introduced this word while I was just talking about worship, the biblical uh, meaning of worship. But um, when you look at the Bible, actually, uh, the translations actually uh, try to actually cover this up in the sense that uh, uh, not to confuse the English readers or uh, you know local language readers or something like that. Um, uh, they do not want them. Uh, they don't want them. translate. Uh, uh, every word exactly the way, same way in every other context because the context is what uh, matters. Uh, there are uh, many places in the Bible where uh, you know Abraham is actually bound them, uh, himself to the sons of Heth. They are not even believers. When they show the good, uh, you know, in Genesis twenty three seven, um, Sarah dies and uh, want to bury her. These sons of Heth or uh, Hittites come to come to Abraham and uh, ask him uh, ask him to take uh, take land to bury his wife. They, uh, they do this wonderful gesture and do something good. And how does uh, Abraham respond to that? He bows himself uh, in front of those uh, people. He uh, he humbly bows himself uh, in front of uh, um, the sons of Heth. So the same word shakha is used to worship, to bow down and all. Okay, uh, can we say that he worshipped him? As in, like, uh, did he mean or did he, he did not mean by the by prostrating completely then to them, uh, saying that they are gods or anything like that? Okay, even when it comes to Joseph's uh, brothers, they all bow down to him, and uh, so it is also used for. Uh, venerating or uh, honoring some person the same word shaka is used okay and even for angels in many um, uh, 
many contexts is uh, it's used okay um for example here and he said nay but as the captain of the host of the lord so he is not the lord but the captain of the host of the lord an angel appears to joshua in this uh, this verse here joshua 5 uh, chapter 5 14th verse and uh, and he said uh, joshua just asked this question are you on our side or his side and and the angel replies and says that i am the captain of the host of the lord um, uh, uh, but as a captain of the host of the Lord, am I ca now come? Okay. And Joshua falls on his face to the earth and did worship. So when it when we look at the KJV, they easily use this worship uh, word. Okay. Uh, so we should not th here think that there is a worship of angels going on, uh, uh, that which is prohibited in uh, in the New Testament also in one place uh, in. I think it's for Colossians. He actually mentions that you know, don't let anyone fool you um, for the worship of angels. Is he worshiping an angel? No, no, that's not what's happening. He he he's in awe and he gives that respect that is uh, uh, due to uh, angel FB. Okay, so um, what is happening here is veneration actually. Okay, so it's not the word that is important, but the concept. So we need to understand the difference between these concepts. And Say and uh, say uh, said unto him, What say my Lord unto his servant? So he actually uh, humbles himself before the this angel. Okay, so uh, he lifts up. Uh, so uh, even when uh, these three angels come to meet uh, Abraham, even then he actually goes and bows himself and all the same word Shaha is used in all these contexts. Okay. And uh, this uh, this verse over here is very uh, interesting, okay? Because uh, that translators, whatever they do, they cannot get around this thing, okay? So, and David said to his, his, all the congregations from First Chronicles 29, 20, um, David says to all the congregation, now bless the Lord your God. So he's uh, commanding them to worship God. And all the congregation, bless the Lord God of their fathers, okay? On the, all the congregation blessed him, yes, and bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord. Okay. So far, it is they, worship, they are worshiping uh, the Lord, and there is this one bowing for the Lord and the King. Okay, so he's the here they bow down to the Lord and the King. The King here is David, they bow down to King and the Lord at the same time. Okay. In their heart they know that you know they are worshiping god but venerating the king okay so this concept of veneration is very much there in the bible okay it's not some way uh, word that uh, on the orthodox have just made up okay because the orthodox just comes from the similar culture this culture where they bow down to men angels okay uh, um, this similar culture that is why we see uh, you know uh, all of these pieces that we see okay so but what about objects so far we have just seen like living people and all but are objects treated in that same way honored and venerated yes as we see the ark of the covenant people worship before it burn incense before it bow down before it okay so the perfect example for this clear example for this is uh, uh, how joshua rent his clothes and fell on the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the event died. He and the elders of Israel, so all the elders of Israel, okay, all with Joshua, fall upon their face. That is what it says. They fall upon their face in the English. When we go and look at the Hebrew, it is the same word, shaha. Okay, before this object, they bow down and. Uh, they repented okay the, uh, as as a communal repentance area I repented all these were uh, done okay um, not something completely uh, foreign or like something uh, athletes are made up or uh, orthodox are made up or something like that okay it uh, it is there in the bible okay so uh, even towards the temple we they showed a certain kind of reverence and remember that uh, jesus uh, identified as the temple of God, right? Moreover, concerning the stranger, okay, after the uh, 
Solomon's temple is built when he is talking about uh, other people as in pagans who come to believe in God and uh, worship him this is what he says moreover concerning a stranger as in who is not uh, uh, that is not of thy people Israel but cometh out of a far country from the for thy name's sake for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and thy stretched out arm when he shall come and pray towards this house okay so he is talking about how the people used to pray towards his house so if you look at the whole context you read the whole chapter in the, in its context and all you see that all these israelites were turning towards the temple and worshiping so we have to ask like why towards the temple um, it's an object it's something created okay are they making an idol of it no that, that is what these people are doing they are turning towards a in the temple and revering it as an object because it's holy because god's presence makes it makes it holy okay and um, and said unto them that sold doves okay so even in john 2 uh, not to think that oh why are you telling us like something from the old testament and all but uh, jesus when he actually comes in the new dispensation and the new testament he calls the temple the my father's house okay and he also uh, in his uh, in his discourse and the uh, to his discourse um, he says that uh, whosoever sweareth by the uh, swears by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein so you swear by the temple you are swearing by god himself okay so that, that is what he said so there is a close association between this object this physical object that is built by a human hand but just like the this um this and uh, this ark they being worshipped here no they are not worship, uh, being worshipped here um, the persons who are bowing down before the temple before the uh, ark of the covenant they are not they have that uh, sense that you know they are not bowing down even if they bow before cherubim or the or the angels or the men they are very sure that you know I'm not worshiping this person i am honoring them because god has blessed them okay because god's grace dwells in them. god's presence dwells in them. there are people or entities or um, things that is what is happening here right so uh, in the same way we can understand uh, icons the way we understand the ark and the temple okay they are not god they are holy they hold the grace of god same way these people the saints they are not god okay but they are holy they have god in them the kind of life that they the holy life that they live it shows that they are uh, uh, and when we look at uh, mary uh, we know that you know god himself tell uh, felt in her okay that is what makes her, her holy okay the temple was just a shadow it was actually just a shadow uh, uh, that god dwelt in uh, it or uh, the ark of the covenant is just a shadow okay but the thing is the real um, when it actually really comes to pass what happens uh, a, a virgin gives birth okay god literally dwells in flesh okay so uh, so uh, we can understand the uh, the logic behind uh, the uh, veneration of images and uh, when we look at the tradition of the church also um, it is believed by many people that you know it came after constantine or something like that but uh, you know there is a reality of tradition in the bible itself okay let's uh, talk about tradition in, before going into the history of the church or anything like that um if you look at the bible we do not find kind of service that they did in the temple in the sense that we know what kind of we have a good idea because uh, uh, what kind of things were used candles and you know candlestick and uh, um, the show build and everything um incense altar and uh, um, you know the temple how the structure was uh, was there everything was there but the thing is what kind of prayers did they did they use one after the other every day daily service daily 
sacrifices what prayers were said one after the thing one after the other what was done okay some of it is given completely not everything is uh, is given and when solomon uh, decides to build the temple okay and organize worship and all what is it, what is the, what is the bible saying in two places in nehemiah and in, even in chronicles it says the same thing according to the commandment of david and both the singers and the potters kept the word of their god, of their god and the word of the word of purification according to the commandment of david so all these worship services were according to the commandment of david in the sense that they did not make it up as they go along it was by tradition holy tradition right um, this is in the uh, old testament itself we think that uh, um, so they did not follow sola scriptura here uh, they did not just say like you know just go by everything that moses alone said or something like that they uh, went according to the commandment of david but we do not know what the commandment of david is because if you look through the bible and all you won't find any instructions uh, given actually it might be a book okay or it might be just a oral uh, direction that solomon was uh, and solomon and david gave so that uh, services were conducted in a certain way so that is about tradition okay so uh, all when you look at uh, this uh, place that was found uh, in syria okay this uh, archaeological site that was found um, both uh, a synagogue jewish synagogue and um, uh, and a church was found in uh, in dura europos okay, in syria and what do we find there so, surprise surprise this was before the time of constantine it was a pre constantine era and um, we find that it is full of images okay? and it's and even in the synagogue Uh, not just Christians, but uh, we get a clue of uh, where they got it from, because uh, it is full of images on the uh, um, uh, doors, just like Kathras icons right now. But where did they get it from? Even the Jews have in this in their synagogue also. It was there uh, in the same way. So you see uh, down here, like the image on the right is a image of the synagogue. It's it's not the church, but the synagogue. and all the things from the old testament things the uh, events that happened in the old testament they are uh, depicted in uh, picture form over there so and we need to remember that uh, back then in synagogues and churches worship used to be conducted in a certain way not like now they did not go and sit in chairs or like sit down and uh, look at the show or something like that okay they went there to prostrate So all these uh, images they used to prostrate in front of the images, in the sense, okay, and they did not pros and they knew that they these are not idols or like you know, you know representing other gods or anything like that. They knew their function, right? And there were many um, prostrations even in the early church, even in the Jewish worship, okay. Um, nowadays in uh, somewhere like you know the western church has forgotten that but the thing is even in orthodoxy even now like we have a lot of prostrations in church that is a normative way of uh, worship okay so even in europe europe okay this is the date that uh, um, it dates back to okay this is before way before constantine so 233 to uh, 256 ad so uh, these kind of icons are fun so the hand that you see on the top that is a hand of uh, god actually so in a symbolic manner they used to represent uh, things like that so that uh, it would be uh, clear so this is not like after constantine or anything like that both in jewish synagogues and um, in christian places there were icons there were images used okay archaeology um is something very interesting that uh, proves this point okay so uh, when we think about uh, why images are not uh, allowed we think about how the incarnation changes everything 
because they did not see anything back then when uh, God had not incarnated God did not come in, come in human form so why would they make any image of the God there is no image of God so far of what I have all that I have shown is of angels okay is of creatures and uh, part of the creature created order okay and even if there is an image of God or not like it's very symbolic in the sense that they hand of the Lord or something like that okay but when we look at uh, what in the incarnation is when Jesus comes in human form what uh, happens okay the opposite of what was said in their Deuteronomy that uh, you, you saw no manner of similitude the opposite of that is true in the incarnation okay so when Philip asks, uh, uh, asks uh, Jesus Lord show us the father and it is sufficient for us and Jesus said to him have I have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me Philip he who has seen me has seen the father so he here he is saying that you have seen me okay and you have seen the father also because I am the express image of the father and what does Colossians 1 uh, 15 says he is the image of the invisible God okay the firstborn over all creation okay he is the icon in Greek if you look at that word it is icon okay icon in Greek he is the image of the invisible God so he is an image so images can be made of images okay um, and he appears in a human form for whom uh, for whom he did for you he also did predestinate to be conformed to the icon of his son even here the word icon is used that it's the icon of his son okay so we are made into icons of God okay all the saints with that we see and all and if we are saved all of us as Christians we are icons of God in the original sense we are icons in the sense that um, God created us in his image yes even they, that in the Greek uh, in Greek language is icon Okay. Um, in the Hebrew, it's a selen. So uh, we are uh, conformed to the image of His Son in His perfection. In His, uh, we are conformed to the image of God that we might be firstborn, firstborn among many brethren. Hence, due to the incarnation, we have more reason to depict heavenly real reality. So in the in the incarnation because god comes in human form visible okay even in timothy first timothy uh, what is paul saying and, um, and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness so he described this as a mystery god was manifested in the flesh so this incarnation is a mystery uh, that you know, he the uh, uncreated one enters into creation and in the invisible becomes visible right justified in the spirit seen by angels why does he say seen by angels uh, we always think of God as like you know in heaven sitting there and all these angels know how he looks but uh, the, the biblical teaching is that they themselves the angels do not know how he looks when the incarnation happened they wondered okay even in orthodox hymnography um, in orthodox hymns we see that you know uh, the angels wondered how and saw God for the first time in the womb of Mary they could see uh, uh, how this great wonder of the incarnation so preached among the Gentiles believed on in the world received up in glory so that's the thing we need to think about it in reality in the Old Testament there was no image of God because uh, they did not see anything as in God was invisible and no but the thing is in the New Testament he does a wondrous thing he comes in human form he enters creation and that is what changes everything okay as uh, in the 7th century uh, our John of Damascus the father of the church says the whole earth is a living icon of the face of God they do not worship matter so here he is using the 
here uh, english word that is uh, used here is worship but uh, he makes a distinction he saying i do not uh, latria matter i think i do not worship matter latria is only offered for god i worship the creator of matter i will only worship the creator of matter that is what the other of doctrine is we only worship the creator of matter who became matter for my sake as in he became matter for my sake he entered uh, he became man as john's gospel says he who will to take his abode in matter he dwelt in matter okay? who worked out my salvation through matter through becoming man he he worked out the salvation if he didn't want it, you know uh, to be identified with creation and all he could have just sent us a book okay just like in islam or something so what they believe he could have sent just like the gospel but no he himself came to redeem us we need to think about why he came why he actually worked in uh, he was in creation itself why did he enter creation okay never will i cease honoring the matter which brought my salvation i will keep i will not stop honoring so he is asserting the orthodox doctrine that i will not stop honoring the matter which brought my salvation so the uh, matter here honoring his here is talking about um, proskunio okay as in uh, dulia as he makes the distinction okay let's look at that uh, the next slide so i honor it but not as god so we honor matter created things material things but not as god so, but not as god because of this i salute all remaining matter which uh, with reverence we uh, so he says that i salute all matter okay uh, all remaining matter because god has filled it with his grace and power so through it my salvation has come to me so you understand the logic behind honoring or veneration okay so there are three levels of veneration okay first one or respecting or uh, worship that is offered first one is latria okay what we actually looked at idio latria uh, latria okay we only uh, which translates in english we say call it adore or worship in uh, uh, how it is used in uh, nowadays okay so latria means to adore to worship okay so it's only reserved for god then uh, what uh, john of damascus was saying and uh, what romans were saying um, back then in the verse latria is only offered to uh, god god alone Hyperdulia is an excessive uh, sort of uh, re reverence or veneration. Dulia and hyperdulia. Okay, uh, hyper is excessive, kind of a special reserved for Mary. We offer. So this is uh, these are the distinctions that um, um, that uh, John of Damascus actually in his book uh, on the uh, divine images gives. latria hyperdulia dulia so hyperdulia is that excessive uh, kind of special respect that we give to mary special uh, sort of honor and veneration that we give to mary and uh, all those other saints and all the holy objects and uh, um, holy things what do they give the lowest level of veneration or honor is seen okay bowing down which is, which is reserved for saints and angels okay so what are uh, what is all these distinctions and all to explain to others who do not understand okay and what are they these people doing orthodox people they are doing exactly what uh, abraham did when he bowed to the angels okay so exactly what Mo moses did when he bowed to the ark of the covenant the holy object okay on images and uh, exactly what the apostles would have done we never think of apostles as doing something like that but they went to the temple it is not completely foreign to them and all right uh, to actually imagine that uh, something could uh, so like this could happen right they used to give honor to the temple okay they were not like uh, completely against uh, the temple worship or anything like that 
okay even if the if there was a ark of the covenant it was brought uh, outside they would have um, they would have bowed down to it okay god saw it you know appropriate that the ark of the covenant would not be there but the temple was there okay so because the real ark and the real temple is uh, uh, is in christ actually right so uh, when we look at uh, where god dwelt okay when we have no problems in the sense that you know that's the old testament these people are bowing down to the presence of god in but what do you think happens in the new testament new testament is more glorious more wonderful that was just an object the ark of the covenant was just an object okay but the, we in the new testament we have the ark of the new covenant okay the ark is uh, associated with the presence of god where was the presence of god he was he was born through a woman he was inside a woman okay so a golden box is much more uh, you know uh, uh, much more uh, less important or less holy than the mother of god who is like a person who lived a holy life right and who held god uh, in herself in a unique manner okay so uh, so we need to understand the biblical mindset to get it because some people do not understand that you know uh, some people believe that uh, you know uh, the apostles and the new testament is very different and you know, okay. some people have seen like you know in the new, that's the old testament uh, because they were uh, um, you know less developed or whatever um, that is why god uh, allowed such uh, kind of things and all but uh, in the new testament there is nothing like that but uh, that is very strange because uh, uh, when you are citing the commandment even the commandment is from the old testament Uh, it is the context of the commandment that i just explained to, to you right now is from the old testament new testament they don't focus upon that much upon uh, you know uh, all those things uh, that right so in the new testament uh, uh, you have to understand the things in the bible that we see okay uh, to understand how the people also thought okay um, so when the sick were being healed and all and all these people come to come to peter so they brought the sick and out in streets and they laid them on beds and couches and it uh, that at least the shadow of the peter passing by uh, fall on some of them people were facing the uh, sick people in the shadow of uh, peter what is a shadow when we look at a shadow we see an outline of the person like a uh, faint image of the person what is so important in uh, peter's shadow why is he so important um, they could just say i believe in god i don't believe in shadows or something like that but that is not what they say but uh, when the grace of god is upon a person when they are deified the sense that they attain uh, salvation they are full of the holy spirit this is what happens even their body in their handkerchiefs and aprons okay and all this uh, and another point about uh, people worshiping jesus in uh, new testament when we read it in the new testament and all we see like you know how these people coming and bowing down before jesus and we would think that uh, this is a very strange thing and all but uh, it something that was very common uh, back then people used to bow down to elders uh, uh, make their uh, prostration before uh, elders and rabbis and, uh, and holy people and all that was uh, that is why they, they were doing it these people did not believe that jesus is god and most of the people in uh, uh, that bow down to jesus they don't have that uh, um, knowledge yet because uh, he reveals a, uh, his about his divinity uh, in uh, only to the people who were following him and in stages uh, so uh so we need to keep in mind that uh, that is what is happening right so uh, when uh, in another uh, instance in acts again in acts 19 these handkerchiefs and all uh, aprons all these things were brought to the sick and all. we and sometimes in in some christian groups and all like in charismatic groups this is like uh, abused this kind of um, stuff they just read the bible and do something like that right But the thing is uh, it is there in the bible in the sense that we know the uh, 
abuse of this verse and like you know all the drama that goes on in the uh, name of miracles but i um, i want you to focus upon the mindset of uh, new testament christians that they would not look at holy objects as something you know something okay that is not important they would actually look at uh, it as uh, something that is holy okay and uh, when you look at hebrews 11:21 by faith jacob when he was dying blessed both the sons of joseph and worshiped leaning upon the top of his staff if you go and look in genesis where this happens it is translated little bit differently why because uh, uh, the new testament whoever wrote hebrews was using the greek bible hebrew the old testament but when uh, uh, but uh, our english bibles or whatever language bibles are used Uh, they translated it from the um, from the Hebrew. That is why it says bed in the uh, Hebrew. But uh, more detail is given in uh, in this uh, uh, in this verse. That leaning upon the staff, he worshipped leaning upon the top of his staff. Okay, so this is seen as a uh, precursor of the cross in the sense that uh, the staff is used. When we think of it, like you know, why would he use his staff? Uh, why would he Do that, and why is this mentioned here in Hebrews as in, uh, something important? And you know? so, holy objects and the use of objects in worship is very much found in the Bible. Okay, so exalt you. So even in Psalms ninety in ninety nine five, okay, it says, exalt you the Lord our God and worship at His footstool. Exalt you the Lord our God and worship at His footstool. But he is holy. So, says that you worship at his footstool. If you look at it in the Hebrew, it's translated it as worship at his footstool. But uh, it can also be translated as even in Greek or um, um, Hebrew, uh, it can be translated as worship the footstool. For he is good. Offer worship to the footstool. Okay. So it can be translated as that too. Right. So uh, here, what is the, the footstool that he is talking about? He is talking about the Ark of the Covenant, of how they actually, as I showed you uh, in the Bible, that how uh, they used to worship before the Ark okay? and uh, bow down before the Ark. Let's so, look at uh, verses which are used to say that you know, uh, you know, uh, worship of anyone else or like bowing down before anyone else is wrong. um so there is this one verse in revelation which says that uh, i fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me so he john were uh, uh, you know um, baffled by what he sees and uh, surprised by what he sees like the glory that he cannot take he uh, falls upon the feet of this angel and tries to worship uh, him okay he the how do it not i am thy fellow servant So here uh, in Revelation you find find this verse saying that do not do that the angel prevents it why is it okay. and Peter also says to um, Cornelius okay when he tried to worship him says that Peter lifted him up saying stand up I myself am also a man okay and um, saying sirs do and do you these things okay. why do you the, these things when in another uh, chapter in Acts. these two people uh, are started worshiping as a pagan gods or something like that because they were did some miracle um, so what do they tell uh, uh, tell all these people why do you do this thing they uh, run away in horror so what is all of this going on in the case of cornelius in the case of uh, these other people uh, simon or like you know uh, paul and barnabas um they are actually um, dealing with pagans in the sense that um, they are not sure that uh, in people on the other side understand what they are doing for nelius all these pagans uh, um, they think that uh, oh maybe they might start worshiping me as god so as uh, to protect themselves from that they are trying to Um, stop that! That kind of uh, worship being offered to um, these people. Okay, so uh, 
uh, and in the when it comes to the revelation part when the angel re refuses him we can interpret this as uh, you know john reaching a state of holiness that he is able to go to heaven and uh, he becoming like equal to the angel that he is not allowed to actually bow down and worship him or john mistaking the angel for jesus because of the glory that he sees and him trying to worship him as god so the angel perceives that suddenly and says that you know i am just a fellow servant i am just an angel created be i am not god just telling him that okay could be that because in the same revelation what does god say behold what did jesus say behold i will make them of the synagogue of satan which say they are jews or not but do not behold i will make them to come and worship okay proskeneo before thy feet so god himself say that you know i will make them worship before thy feet okay the kjv bible is very good in this because it translates the words exactly um, in the same way because in the modern sense uh, modern translation translated uh, differently so that it doesn't become uh, clear okay and uh, when you tell people on this uh, they think that they are, you are lying to them and all but the thing is the same kind of words proskeneo kha kha all now these are used okay um, when talking about god any kind of because all these things mean is like you bowing down or offering worship or something okay so uh, but we need to understand the difference right uh, here jesus is not saying i will make you a god and like you know, that uh, uh, you know that person i will make them worship you as a god or something like that no that's not what is happening is talking about subjection and all in the same way all the when joseph's brothers were uh, um, humbled before uh, him after they committed some he all these jews will also be humbled before the believer okay okay so okay um, we need to say a few things about iconography and painting Okay. people think they are the same thing of course they are icons are images that are painted but they have a certain kind of rules okay and author of iconography is different from other christian art the one uh, the image on the right side you see it is a just a painting made upon the imagination of people okay on the left side what you see with the greek letters Jesus Christos, okay, and uh, the letters here uh, mean, okay, Omega. All of these, what what does this mean? I means I am that I am. Okay, that's what it means. So, uh, author of cyberography is according to revelation, hence that only depicts what is a revelation. Okay, as in because God incarnated, we make an image of God. Make uh, an image of God and we represent Him as God. Then said, these letters are written to indicate who this is, who the person is depicted. Okay, if uh, a saint is depicted, the their name is written down. Okay, and uh, only Jesus has this cross behind His halo. Okay, this is not a halo actually. That's the divine light that uh, emanates from God. Okay, uh, here you see like you know a man. most of the western images that you see like you know it was it is of a white person okay white person with a halo sometimes or uh, you know with uh, caucasian features blond hair or something like that okay purely based on uh, you know imagination author does like iconography is based on tradition in the sense that um, how god uh, how jesus looked is not the focus what the icon is speaking to you is the focus back then they did not uh, 90 99% of the population did not know how to read they could not read so icons have acted as a teaching tools for the gospel to be explained clearly even now majority of the population even in india they do not know how to read and this is a great way to teach people how the gospel because a picture stays in your mind very clearly 
why the text actually re requires more imagination and all right so and uh, um, the uh, kind of hand sign that he's making it is uh, it has to do with his name Jesus Christos okay high row high row symbol uh, used this is high okay uh, row would be written like P okay so uh, here you see like you know P and X right X here and this is talking about Jesus Christos. He is blessing us through his name and he is giving us his holy gospel. Okay, that is what the symbol symbolism of this is. Okay. So uh, the oh, so icons have a message to do. And uh, uh, there is no icon made of the God. It is according to Revelation. Hence that um, because the God, the Word, the Logos, incarnated as a person. We make an image of um, God, the image of Jesus, right? Because He actually was seen, but God, the Father, is still not seen. Because that is why Jesus says, uh, "No one has seen uh, the Father except the Son, who is in the bosom of the Father," right? And he had declared his father, uh, uh, the father to all. As in, he actually he is the image or icon of God who declares God to us, the invisible God. So we do not make uh, any image of uh, and imagine. Uh, so in Western icons, you see, like you know, they depict uh, God as some kind of old man. That is not to be found in orthodoxy. In the sense that in wherever you look, you won't find an uh, icon of. Um, the father some people might make it okay but uh, that is influence from the catholics looking at the catholics uh, they do something like that but in our canonical uh, um, rules it is prohibited okay? it is prohibited to make any image of the father okay? because jesus is the perfect image of the father okay? uh, and uh, there are some places where you know the Holy Spirit is depicted as Tao and fire, but uh, this is very purely symbolic. Like the hand that you we saw, that hand is also very purely symbolic. Uh, uh, you know, symbolism also is very much used in the icon, and icons only depict reality. Okay, they don't depict you know some kind of imaginative. Uh, uh, two three different hands of Christ or something like that. They re, re, um, declare the truth. He was a human being, okay, who looked a certain way. Is what uh, is uh, important, okay. The point: uh, there are no graven images, and they are uh, they are hyper realistic, okay. No graven images are used, as in only two dimensional paintings. And uh, you know, two dimensional icons are used, but no graven images are used. No statues you will find in our churches. Just like you we saw in the early churches, no statues were, will be found. Not that the statues are wrong, because in the Old Testament you see the statues of uh, cherubim made. Okay, but they are not uh, venerated. Okay, in some churches like outside of the church and all, like you know, just for memorial or like some honor. We can put up some statue, okay, just for cultural memory or something like that. But uh, these things are prohibited inside of um, uh, the church, and they are not uh, venerated at all. No, because the point is to uh, make it uh, according to uh, Orthodox tradition, okay, and. Uh, even images are hyper realistic in the sense that they try to make it look exactly like a photograph as in or like a person would be when you look at icons you see that uh, they are not hyper realistic nobody looks like this because the point is not how jesus looked or what his features are and all even the gospels do not focus upon how exactly the way he looked uh, his uh, appearance and all of that it, they don't do that because that is not the point of the incarnation the point of the incarnation is that he was really incarnate. He came as a man. That is the point of making an image, saying that he was really there. Because uh, there were some Gnostic people preaching back then, 
that uh, uh, he was not really born that it was an illusion and all right because in, even in uh, uh, even in hinduism and all they have this concept that you know there is an illusion that uh, god uses or uh, like one of their gods used to fool people and all that is not the view that the bible preaches okay that he was a really man 100% man that we as we look at the icon right okay icons are made according to particular rules icons are in tools that i have already told you okay and they are very theological okay they preach a message a the theology uh, that is also part of it okay so let us sum up everything okay like we did for the worship video when you look at the old testament moses and israelites used icons okay part of the tabernacle and temple worship this is not something that uh, i am just telling like you know taking one verse and one instance where they bow down before the ark or uh, the temple or like um, they worship before the before images this is like continuous thing that happens from the time of moses to you know mm, uh, the time of jesus and even in the new testament and all they have the temple and all but uh, jesus and uh, apostles who worship in the temple but they don't say one word against uh, the temple worship they do not say anything like that they uh, they revere it and jesus himself calls it, uh, it my father's house he did not call it the temple of idols or something right temple of images or something like that it was completely okay to have images in the temple right and uh, you know, basically what i already told you that the incarnation changes everything when god enters uh, human nature he takes on human nature takes on a body it's something that is visible he is visible okay and that is why we made an image of uh, god uh, image of jesus only the um, uh, only uh, god the word okay who became incarnate and he will remain incarnate to the end of the world right that is why they make an image of him right uh, it is because it preaches the truth when you don't make an image of uh, Christ and all in sense uh, in the sense you are denying the uh, um, incarnation uh, you are saying that that is not important when in, uh, when the whole point of the new testament is god coming in the flesh and redeeming us through that uh, god becoming visible okay the invisible becoming visible right so um, and even in church history you see early days from that the, the icons were used even 200 just after 200 years or so after the church started we find evidence that uh, in archaeology we find crosses we find images so while this this was uh, remember the church that was persecuted by the roman empire why would they go and make uh, images and all they were running away from idolatry. They were not uh, ready to worship the idols and all. So these same people were making uh, uh, images, making images and worship, using them as icons in the in their churches. So that uh, that church that you saw in Dura Europius, this was not like a public church. This was a house church. Another misconception that people have is they think that the house churches back then were. Uh, people just sitting in a circle and just uh, um, singing songs and uh, worshipping that way but uh, evidence actually shows something contrary in the sense that uh, they did liturgical worship when they got together and once that house that one room of the house church at all would be dedicated to worship and they would not do any other uh, things that was uh, um, that was relegated as um, holy uh, something holy and sacred okay sacred space and they used to worship uh, conduct only worship rooms okay it was not like the uh, house churches that we see in our cultures where uh, other parties or something like that also would happen everyday activities would take place in the same place um, that uh, the living room will be converted into church only on the sundays and all that is not uh, what we see if we look into the evidence in dura europeus in other places also so they had altars, they had uh, all this, um, all the requirements of liturgical worship and they worshipped in that manner. Okay. So uh, there is a consistent doctrine about them in the authors. Not like, oh, let's just make uh, images, just do whatever you want. Okay. 
that is not how it works in uh, in the orthodox church it's not like uh, what we see sometimes in catholicism right nothing is defined nothing is um, you know there are no rules and all or oh, whatever uh, a person imagines they just make an image and uh, you know try to do whatever right uh, try to offer something and all like there is no offering going on uh, um, you know um, uh, in front of these images and all there is worship going on worship towards god okay offering incense to god yes uh, it is used to bless the icons just like it is used to bless the uh, human beings who uh, who are living icons of god right so in the same way uh, um, in the same way there is consistent doctrine that teaching which comes from ancient times in the orthodox church about icons which is consistent and biblical That's the point of uh, making this video i hope you understand uh, understood this uh, thank you everyone